And we're talking about the framework for his proposed tax plan. Donald Trump referred to it as a middle-class miracle. It's no surprise that Democrats and other critics don't see it that way. They say Mr. Trump's plan benefits only the richest among us. We're going to talk about that and more with Congressman Roger Marshall, Republican of Kansas, serves on the House Agriculture Committee and the Committee on Small Business. He joins me from Washington. Congressman, before we get to the tax framework, Mr. Trump has issued words of comfort for the victims in Las Vegas, praise for the first responders, hasn't mentioned anything about gun legislation, did say on the way to Puerto Rico that we'll be talking about gun laws as time goes by. What do you make? Should we have tougher? You can buy a machine gun in Nevada legally. Well, Larry, certainly it's a controversial issue, and I've always been a very strong advocate of protecting all the amendments and all of our freedoms of Americans. I don't know why we have to think we can have either or. I think we can protect our, our liberties that we've been granted in the Constitution and maintain public safety. My dad was the chief of police in a small town for 25 years, so I think I could understand a little bit of that side of it as well. So we can have both, uh, but the people of Kansas sent me here to have that conversation, and we need to get to work on it. Uh, d does the Second Amendment read clear to you? Yes, sir, it sure does. It reads very clearly that I have a right to bear arms. Just that plain and simple. But it says to form a militia. It, it sure does. And I guess what I would say is we need to be able to bear arms in case we need to form that militia. So uh, I'm very much an advocate of the Second Amendment. But we can have both. We can have both our Second Amendment and public safety. And, you know, one thing we've worked on is, is addressing mental illnesses. Uh, as a physician, the last 25 years, certainly I've seen the number of people with mental illnesses, uh, severe mental illnesses out and about. Uh, they're, they're, in our, they're in our parks, they're the homeless people, they're the people that are filling our homeless shelters. So we've taken some address, address some of those issues in the most recent Congress to try to have adequate funding to help some of those people. So we can have both public safety and our Second Amendment. All right, one other thing in that area, and then we'll get to the budget and other things. Why is it so hard to agree on a ban for semi-automatic rifles? Of what use are they? Well, s certainly uh, the, the high-powered rifles are used in hunting. Uh, there is a, they're used as sportsmen, as marksmanship, some of those types of things. I think most of us are afraid just of a slippery slope of what are you gonna, what are you gonna call a high-powered rifle? But I think we need to have those conversations and I think that that's why I'm here, is to be able to talk about some of these tough subjects. Okay, the president's tax framework. First, what's your opinion of what's been proposed? Oh, I'm so excited, Larry. This will be, be uh, next to repealing Obamacare, this will probably be the biggest thing we get to do here, and this may be even bigger. You know, you know first, I can just, I'm here to show you this little postcard. This is a postcard that would show you how simple it will be for 90% of Americans to fill out their taxes. Can you imagine 90% of people, you fill this card out and you're done? That would be... Uh, <laughs> A blessing, but they're saying that the rich get richer with this. The top grade goes down, the estate tax goes out, that overcoming that interest thing, which helps us, uh, these funds, helps realtors. Uh, you increase 10% to 12% on the poorest. The middle class, someone said the middle class saves $900 while the rich saves thousands. Yeah, I think first and foremost that this bill will help lower the taxes on middle America. It's going to help middle America. That would be our primary goal when we started this task. Uh, way back when Kevin Brady first presented this to us in conference in January, that was his primary goal. What this bill does, it lowers the 10% tax bracket to zero and those at 15 down to 12% and doubles the deduction from 12 to 24,000. That spells relief. I'm not sure how you spell relief. But lowering those taxes from 10 to 0, from 15 to 12, doubling the deduction, that's relief for middle America. Does the rich get benefits from this? I'm sure that, that, that they will get some benefits, but what they're going to do is we're going to grow jobs. I think that most people, if, if you think about lowering t corporate taxes, most small businesses are S-Cores and LLCs. If we lower those rates down to 25%, those are going to grow jobs for rural Kansas, for rural America, for Main Street as well. So I think that uh, m most people that own businesses will take that money, reinvest it, and grow this economy. And if the economy grows, I hope it'll raise all boats, we hope. Is that trickle-down? 
You know, I, I hear people describe part of it as, as trickle down. I think that, uh, that part of it will be trickle down. I think what we're emphasizing is growing the economy any way we can. Warren Buffett and Larry Fink, towering figures in American business and Wall Street, said the tax plan specifically to cut U.S. corporate tax rate won't work. Well, I disagree with them. I absolutely think they're going to work. What people don't realize, we have the seventh highest corporate tax rate in the world. So right now, we're losing American jobs by people, by companies moving overseas. So we're constantly losing jobs because of this high corporate tax rate that we have. It will work. Why is there such a divide in this country, Roger? Oh, my. That's a good question. I, I think uh, they're very, times are very polarizing. I think that people are able to get the news that they want from the station that they want. They can target social media now to the type of news they want, so they only hear one side or the other. Um, it, it has become very polarized. And that's my job here. My job is to bring people together to solve problems, to sit down, get to know people across the aisle and down the aisle as well. So my job here is to help solve some of that divide. Are you optimistic that it will happen? Absolutely. I think our freshman class is a great example. I think we've had five bipartisan freshman events already where we get together. We went uh, to the Holocaust Museum together. We watched the basketball games together. So I think it's about learning from each other, learning why, why is agriculture important in Florida? Why is agriculture important in Delaware? And then, so, and then writing a farm bill that works for, for all those states. So I absolutely see optimism. So why don't we hear more about that? We keep hearing that in the old days, Republicans and Democrats got together. They were best friends. They went to each other's weddings and parties and bar mitzvahs and social events. And we hear that that doesn't exist. Uh, I disagree. I think it absolutely exists. I think if you come and watch, especially the freshmen interact from both the Democrat and Republican Party, you'll see us hugging each other. We know about what's going on in each other's family lives. Uh, a big group of us went to Israel together. Another group of us just went to China together, working on trade and understanding national security. So I think behind the scenes, we get along marvelously. I think that we get on the House floor. Uh, we're professionals. But for some reason, we get in front of a TV, cam in front of a TV camera. We kind of get pushed a little <laughs> left or a little right. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that, Rogers. Thanks so much for joining us. Larry, thanks for having me. I enjoyed getting to talk to you.